It's, oh my goodness, the 24th of May, 2000. And that's my new shack. It's pretty good, right? We got all the work done on it. I'm gonna put a little paint, let's put some curtains up and everything should be okay. That's unit four. And you can have it for a dollar if you want, but it needs a bit of work. Uh, not much though. It needs a bit of plumbing, a little, little electrical. Uh, Molly, it wouldn't hurt to get Molly made in there. Now, don't expect Molly made to make it look like that, even though there's people out there that are claiming it looks like that. So, the heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. So, did that look like it was inside of that building to you? Uh, now, the fuel pull that he was showing you, that was a couple of months ago. Looks like that. And just hang on. Looks like that. Yeah, um, just make sure I was streaming. I forgot for a second. Uh, my computer got taken down. Again, that's seven and six months. Torture. So, here we go again. Keep our fingers crossed. I was only plugged in to the internet for 15 minutes with that computer. Shocking. Um, hi, Missy Sky. I see Miss Milky the Clown is here. Sweet. One, she's so busy. And Amthurs, Grandma Goldie. We got Kevin, Stacy, Sergeant, John. I'm just saying hi to a few people by reflex. And because it's nice to say hi to these people because they're good people and they're doing everything they can. Same as everybody else. Now we realize unit four needs some curtains, but it's okay. That's not gonna crumble. That's not gonna like fall down, Dana. Come on, it's in good shape, boy. It's fine. The, the radiation doesn't make metal weak, Dana. Stop being foolish. Right, it looks perfect. I wanna set up my bedroom in the corner. Get in there with the old vacuum cleaner. I can have that looking pretty good. Um, get some homeless to help me. When they die, I can stuff them and they can fill up the holes in there maybe. I don't know. Is that what they're doing in there? They're stuffing all the holes? Uh, but I can't imagine homeless went in there and done that. Can you? You think the homeless went in there and said, you know what? Give me a half a dozen beer, pack smokes. A buck fifty an hour, and um, let me sleep here in the corner at night time, so I don't have to pay rent. And when we're finished, boss, it look like that, because we're immune to radiation, because we're Japanese, we're special. Japanese people don't get hurt by radiation, see? And you know, I was trying to figure out what kind of color I can put in there, make it look. You know, give it that homey feeling. Uh, I was thinking like um, like some pastels. That would probably help. Some nice pastels. And like you say, if you probably hung a few pictures on the wall, it wouldn't look too bad. That's building four. Can you imagine that crumbling on its own? That just doesn't seem to make sense, right? Buildings don't crumble on their own, Dana. They, they, that building would probably be there in a thousand years. Um, because... That building is special. It's got radiation, and so radiation makes everything stronger, right? Like uh, the Hulk. And so we, or you know, and then when the Hulk has babies, he poops out these little sheeples, and they go, "Yeah, nothing wrong with that building. Building four looks wonderful, Dana. It looks wonderful, Dana." You're just being foolish, Dana. You silly boy, Dana. You silly boy, Dana. What do you, what do you mean looks bad? You're, you're always negative, Dana. You're just negative, 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 Dana. And that's that little voice there. Every time I hear it, that's what I think about that picture there. And they're right that if you took a whole bunch of, you know, ladders and whatever and some paint buckets and and some mop handles and you could probably make it look like that and you don't even have to go through about 
3,000 people. You probably kill 3,000 people. You probably get it to look like that, maybe. No. Well, on Chernobyl, they ran out on the roof for 15 or 20 seconds at a time, then they went home. In Fukushima, they're there, there till they're cooked. They're cooked with uh, neutrons and x-rays because, uh, you know, that's what was, that's what happened to that place. It was detonated all over that place, which kind of reminds me that I, Im I imported, I don't know what I got done with it. Oh, so let me get everything straight for everybody just to make sure everybody's on the same page because I, I got a tendency to ramble on and on sometimes. We're talking about Fukushima Daiichi. And there's four uh, reactors down there, four buildings in particular that we're talking about. There were 16 reactors all together all around Japan that were struggling to survive. And I'll come back to uh, Unit 4 after. But this is Building 1. And so that detonated and is missing its top floor. Whoops, that's Building 3. That wasn't supposed to be the one I was going to show you. First, it was Unit 2. Unit 2 detonated. It had a meltdown inside of it. And then it was Unit 3, I'm supposed to show you. So 1, 2, and 3 that time. And then Unit 4. And so all four of these buildings, uh, the heat signature inside of all four of these buildings, it means you can never get back in there because there's three melted cores inside of those buildings. And don't forget that these buildings all had detonations, right? So they had detonations, melted cores, and as you can see from the evidence, they're in pretty bad shape. And once again, uh, that's the fuel pool uh, at number four. And so we're worried that number four has deteriorated. I know right now it looks pretty good. I know it looks, you know, like you're like, I just throw a bit of paint on it, then it's fine. And, I, and I, I agree with you. A little bit of paint probably wouldn't hurt that. And then the fuel pool, uh, you know, that's... That's not bad. That looks okay to me. I, that's the, what you're looking at there is the, the crane, and the crane goes over the reactor and it brings up the rods, the, the assemblies, and each assembly has 60, 70, 80 rods in it, and the rods are 12 feet long. And then it moves it back over and it drops it down into the storage pool where it sits for a decade. And some of those rods and those pools have been there for uh, 30 years almost. Uh, these rods are hot, and they're producing energy, and they boil off the water in those pools. And those pools are releasing radioactive material into your community. All fuel pools in all reactors are boiling off. Each one of them are boiling off around 120,000 liters a day of radioactive material gets boiled out into your community. And once again, Chernobyl was 30% meltdown. And Fukushima was three 100% meltdowns. And Chernobyl, and this is Chernobyl, and these people on the roof, they run out, they throw a piece off the roof, and then they run home, and they never go back to a nuclear site again. And the people that we bring into Fukushima are not professionals from your institutions. They're not academics from your universities. They're not uh, the co companies and corporations that normally would deal with this stuff. They, what they're bringing into this place here are the homeless and the most vulnerable on the planet. And they could have made a mistake. And so a couple of nights ago, a couple of nights ago, uh, the video you're looking at right now um, was compressed into three minutes. It was an hour long. Okay, Zoe, settle down. Settle down. Settle down. You're some good dog you are. So what you're looking at is a 14-minute video, and it's just starting at the point where you can see the red starting to move across. So this video right now is double speed, so it's a half an hour long originally. And I should have uncompressed it to an hour, but I want it because it's a 14-minute video, and I didn't want to spend 30 minutes on it tonight. Now, you see the fire 
in the middle, progressing across slowly. Now, this is double speed. Remember that. That's progressing across. It's hitting across. See how it's working its way across? And, but it stays lit up all the way behind. This is a fire. You see the smoke increasing. This is a webcam at TEPCO. And so you can see how the fire is staying bright. And let's just, we'll come back and forth to this video. And it's 14 minutes long in its entirety. And it's all fire and it's all smoke. And it's all hemorrhaging. And because of all the rambling I've done about Unit 4, I shouldn't have to go click on that picture right at this moment for you to understand why I think Unit 4 is weak and it's not stable. Yeah, I mean, you can hang up a few curtains, put some paint on the walls, and get away with it for a while, but that building is probably going to... Um, let me jump back to it for one second, because that's the right thing to do. And, you know, that, that building is not stable. And radiation has this effect upon material particularly this kind of radiation where you're getting neutrons and x-rays, not just the gammas, the alphas, and the, and the betas, and the fact that they have been ionized and irradiated, the, the elements uh, that are, the, you know, the beta emitters and the gamma emitters and alpha emitters are atoms and radioactive particles that were energized by the melted reactor cores. And so just one more time to get you back on track of what I'm going to say next is that that building is Unit 4 and this fire and we see in all this release we see from a couple of days ago there's a lot of models out about a single release like that and let me give you an example of Unit uh, this is a model based upon uh, 137 only not the uranium the plutonium and everything else but this is just a short release and so they've done a model through the university's modeling software. And this shows you the dispersal because the jet streams move at 100 miles an hour, say. And so in 24 hours, that's 2,400 miles. And uh, two days later, that's 4,800 miles. And that's three days later almost now. It's just hitting your coast. And so you can see that within, uh, this is how jet streams work. So I'm going to play a video, uh, I better open that folder so I don't get this wrong. Hang on, and you can just watch that for a second. That's the dispersal of a single release. And let me jump, I'm sorry, I'll jump back to that other video. Now you're watching that model, that time. And so we're continuing into that 14 minute video so you can still see the fire in the background. Uh, it's released, you can see all the smoke. Now this is what we assume is radioactive material. Japan is under uh, a siege where the government has strangled the media and the media is not allowed to report if there was a fire there because that's considered national security. Everything about Fukushima now is considered national security. And Save Kids Japan had tweeted what's considered national security about Fukushima apologist and she has been threatened by police who are going to fly a thousand miles to interview her because she twittered that she wasn't happy with these people and their performance and their manipulations and that's exactly what it was so when you uncompress the video that was three minutes long to an hour long you see the fire is sustained it's moving around and it's releasing more and more and more toxins and smoke now on the top of reactor 4 and I'll come back over to that video, uh, video video for you in that fuel pool on the roof of that and I'll show you a picture of that these are the authentic pictures by the way folks I am I do really good on the correct pictures now with the explosions it's hard to get because I don't think you got uh, that I can verify certain uh, videos so I don't, I don't use them for the explosion so I might use you know one or two but obviously the buildings all exploded right and let me show that to you again one more time. And so you can see all, and we know Unit 2, which up in the top right-hand corner, is destroyed on the inside. It's melted through the reactors. These are 100% meltdowns. This is not like Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Just hang on, folks, for a second. So let me, I'll do that. I'll turn off my, uh, I'll slurp on my tea while we're listening to a new creation of 
I'm going to open that folder up so I get the right dates because this is the first time I've done this for you folks. And videos. Just make sure I got the folder because I got everything in order. And so once I start clicking, okay, so this one is MIT March the 15th. And this one is a minute and 43 seconds long. And I done these videos up to date with Wirecast and imported them in there so I wouldn't have to click away tonight. I can have a slurp of my tea. And let's just play the video. I just wanted to get you set. Now, this was, once again, March the 15th, four days after. And I'll better give you another picture to remind you if you're just joining the stream. Here's the four reactors. All four of them are in heart attack mode. Three of them, one, two, and three, 100% meltdowns. The video in the middle, picture in the middle, is the heat signatures of the building and their uh, melted cores and everything else. So here's what Harvard had to say. And I incorporated some pictures for everybody. And I'll be back in a second. I'd like to welcome our own students from nuclear science and engineering and other members of the community here at MIT and also visitors, I think, from elsewhere. And shortly th after 3.30, there was a hydrogen explosion in, building up, in the building of Reactor 1. So when of that explosion? Um, not long after, the evacuation zone was extended to 20 kilometers radius. On Monday at 11 a.m., so this is now uh, in, on the third day, um, there was a, a hydrogen explosion of building of reactor three. In the meantime, reactor two, fuel rods, what, what is reported to have been fully uncovered, and they quite soon began to inject seawater, borated seawater. Water. Um, at 6.14 a.m. on Tuesday, that's today, of course, but, but since they're um, uh, 13 hours ahead of us, that, that was quite a while ago now, um, there was a third explosion. This was in Reactor 2. This was inside, as far as we can tell, inside or near uh, the containment. And um, another worry that arose was on that same day was that the Reactor 4 building Reactor 4 is adjacent to Reactor 3, uh, was observed to be aflame. A, a and um, so this was sort of at the same time that radiation levels were increasing further. There was a lot of suspicion that this fire was in the spent fuel pool. Um, however, since that time, TEPCO has said that there was an oil leak in a water pump and that that was what was, was the cause of the fire. So he's saying there's a leak in the fire or a pump, fuel pump. What do you think? Does that look like a leak in the fuel pump to you? And that's what happened. They knew that happened. And now they're out there trying to tell us this, that it looks like that. And, of course, that it was a leak in the fuel pump. Or just make the stuff up, right? And so, but when you look at this building coming up, this is Unit 4. This is what we're talking about tonight. And this is what we're concerned about when we think that it's crumbled or the back of it blew out because the fuel pools have all the rods in it. Hang on. Here we go. Let me get a picture for you. Inside that reactor, there's nothing in there. The rods were all in the fuel pool because of maintenance and repairs. And so you're talking about 3,450 fuel assemblies. And each assembly has got 60 to 80 uh, rod, 12 foot rods in it. And these are uranium 238. Um, um, this is ionized. And it's got a half life of billions of years times 10. Everything half life is times 10. Now, on the same day, Reuters, or I'm sorry, AP, April the 15th, March the 15th, 2011, four days after, remember, it, MIT told everybody uh, four days after everything was melted down and just that last part about number four, but I showed you the pictures. And so this is AP. This is a short video. Japan says operations of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been suspended. Workers had to withdraw. Earlier, officials said 70% of the fuel rods at one of the facility's six reactors were significantly damaged following Friday's devastating earthquake and tsunami. And Japan's news agency is saying that 33% of the fuel rods of the number two reactor were damaged, adding that the cores of the reactors one and two are believed to have partially melted. 
Meanwhile, the outer housing of the containment vessel at Unit 4 erupted in flames early Wednesday. Japan's Nuclear Safety Agency says although fire and smoke could no longer be seen, it was unable to confirm whether the blaze had been put out. So that was on the 15th. And see the building, so that's over three years this building is in that bad shape. And so they told you on the 14 and the 15, but it all got buried because of the tsunami, and they just didn't follow up on it, and you couldn't find it. Some of you, like the Fukushima hounds, probably could because that's what they do. Uh, but these buildings are not stable, and radiation destroys the integrity of the building. And so that's why we think that what we're looking at uh, in this uncompressed one, which is double speed, shows a massive release and a massive release is a concern and because it's a poor quality it's getting obscured now the smoke gets into the camera for quite a bit there but you can see always see the haze in the background if you look at the original when it's on, on compressed now that fallout nuclear fallout that continued non-stop and we're worried that is a new big plume is here today in North America so that happened a couple of days ago, so the plume would be about right there, right you're looking at right now, right? It's just hitting the coastline, there's a bit over the, right? And now it's starting to come in. Um, so say this is day four, which is the moral, and from that release of what we think, because we can't, they got the media stem down there, they got everybody scared to death, they'll put them away for 10 years, the media can't report on anything that happens, it's national security, and when these plumes came into your coastline, that was national security too, and that's why you, there was hot particles right, right along the entire coastline, right along that, that entire coastline, hang on a second, um, You see this headline? I gotta expand it on my end because I can't read it here. Okay. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine. Now, it doesn't travel by itself per liter. Does rain fall by the liter? It doesn't travel by itself, you know, and it's more than a liter will fall at one time. And this kind of radioactive material is not homeostasis. Now, homeostasis is like a banana. If you eat a banana, you off gas the same becquels of potassium 40 because they're irrelevant. They're insignificant. They're indigenous, normal, everyday, useless background radiation. They won't mutate a fruit fly. A banana won't, right? But 20, this rain, uh, if you drank that, you will be putting off 20 million becquels a second of iodine, which got an eight-day half-life, how convenient, times 10, by the way, so that's 80, and it doesn't travel by itself. You would have had iodine 132, just as much. You would have had well, 10 times as much, you would have had 10 times, 20 times as much as 133 iodine. And for every three 131, so 5 million of those particles would actually, you know, would have been 129 if they were being created at that point. But they counted 20 million particles. And you can put a million particles on a pinhead of a needle. It doesn't seem very like very much, Dana. That seems harmless, Dana. If you ingest a single one of them, you're getting an x-ray uh, constantly for the rest of your life from inside your body. And it's putting up 20 million becquels a second. So you get amazing amounts of different cancers from 131, 132. But it didn't travel by itself. It can't travel by itself. <laughs> it's ludicrous to even suggest that the radioactive particles are all going to say, Hey, we'll see you later, boy. Take care. <laughs> um and this was Harvard, and I'm going to jump out and let this video play. It's not a very long video. And Harvard came out with this, uh, C-SPAN was supposed to be the next one, I'm sorry. So C-SPAN is 1 minute and 34 seconds long, and I fixed this one up today. Some of you have seen some of this before, but I got everything changed for you. And this is what they said on the 16th of March, so five days after... Uh, let me give you a quick picture of that. Five, five days after that creature, the, uh, make sure I got the right one, Harvard. Oh, C-SPAN. 
C-SPAN first, and then Harvard, and then Stanford. So C-SPAN and RC, uh, a couple of days after the accident, five days after the accident. Here we go. We're here to get a briefing on the ongoing crisis associated with the nuclear power plants in Japan. I'm very privileged that we have the executive director for operations at the NRC here, Bill Borchardt. I couldn't speculate on that. An expert, a true expert as well. Uh, again, I wouldn't okay. wish to speculate. So we feel very blessed that you, you could come and, st and stand in until the chairman comes, and we really do welcome you. Again, I can't okay. uh, speculate. Well, teaching uh, all of us the lessons that we have to take away from, from what is happening. I couldn't speculate on that. What we believe is a significant amount of fuel damage uh, in the uh, three re operating reactors, units one, two, and three, which were operating at the time of the earthquake, and then because of the uh, spent fuel problems that are in unit four right. of that reactor facility. All of those factors taken into combination, uh, if that same type of source term, that same type of radiological problem existed in the United States, our recommendation to state governments would be to evacuate okay. out to 50 miles. Well, that's a really good point because I'm asking you, do you know how many people live within 50 miles of San Onofre nuclear power plant? I, I do not know. Well, I'm going to tell you how many people. 7.4 million people. So 7.4 million people. And you, you've seen the dispersal models I was just showing you, right? Okay, let's go into the next one. Now, do you think that building is stable? Do you think that might, you know, just crumble at some point? They, they took the top uh, floors off that, by the way. But do you think with, with cranes, you won't see anybody with scaffolding or you want steeplejack or scaffold connection in there, and you're not going to see anybody in there with cotton torches or carpenters or contractors, no, just homeless, just uh, destitute and the marginalized and the uh, invisible of our society, the heroes, are the heroes of our society. Yet in Chernobyl, one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima, one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. And it wasn't MOX fuel, like number three had MOX fuel in it. And where's number three to? Here we go. That's a pretty good looking building. No big deal, eh? It looks pretty good. Put a tarp on her, she's good to go. Turn the key, she'll be okay, boy. Yeah, you know, no place like home, right? There's like death. That's unit four to the right and number two to the left, you can see. And so that building said projectiles. It ejected the core, it ejected the core all over that site. Kaboomy! It was all gone. Uh, and all the fuel pools are missing. Right, they had detonations. The top left was number one, top right, number two, the bottom left, number three, and the bottom right, number four. The center two photos, top one self-explanatory, and the bottom one is two. It's a heat signature of the melted cores and the heat inside the buildings. It's emblematic of what was going on there. <coughs> you can't get down there. Like the rods are in there somewhere. If the rods touch, the whole building could go up. Or metal from metal touched the rods. So they had an earthquake, shake it, it's down, right? They have an earthquake and shake it and some of the rods bang together. Shall go boomy, boom, boom. Or the building's integrity, obviously it's not intact. Yeah, well, I hang a few curtains up, stuff like that. Put a tarp on the roof, probably fine, but for another... I wouldn't want to be standing underneath it, let's put it that way. But nevertheless, whatever. I'm sure there's a cockroach in there somewhere calling it home. But the reality of it is that building, no matter what you've done to it, the integrity because of the radiation is compromised. It was compromised from the detonation. Uh, I mean, you can see the, the actual true carnage of it. It's very uh, simple. Yet they come out in the last couple of months and told us this. And so they were probably expecting it to crumble, 
And that was the cover story, right? Was to come out and tell you, oh, no, no, everything is fine. Look, see? Because that's what CBC done. That's what... Um, Let's play CBC, let it recycle through. For At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. So you can't get um, checks x-ray from that kind of radiation. You ingest a hot particle, you get a chest ray every second for the rest of your life. So he's telling you a lie. That's an outrageous lie. So let's watch the first part again, though. See the heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end. Now he's saying that's Reactor 4. But that's Reactor 4. That's what the fuel pool looks like. That's what the fuel pool looks like. It does not look like that. And once again, Let's of our through. tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent <coughs> of less than a chest x-ray. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our... Well, that's Reactor 4 too. You can't have both of them, see? So why did they come out and lie to you about that? Why did they lie about everything they say anyway? Let's jump to another one. Let's go to Harvard. And this was a, the date on this one was, and it's how long is it? It's only 20 seconds or something. 28 seconds. And it was March the 16th, five days after Fukushima's accident. Coming up here. And 2011, so five days after. Here's what Harvard said. And it's a really short clip. It's very succinct what he says. But I want you to, you know, go through the whole video, how to hunt it down. There's the name of it there for you coming up. Uh, firstly, uh, Units 1 through 3 are suffering core damage accidents and perhaps spent fuel pool accidents as well. The spent fuel pool is located at the top of the reactor building, uh, which in each case is, is damaged. Units 1 and 3, in, in fact, destroyed at that location. So unit one, two, and three, in fact, destroyed at that location five days after. And so Fox and CNN and MSNBC and BBC and ABC and Seth Dorn at CBS, lying, manipulating, deceiving, and because the nuclear power is more important to them than all life on the planet, than every creature on this friggin' planet, than every animal on this planet, every... Entity on this planet, the nuclear industry, does not care. It will destroy society. I want you to think about this stuff hemorrhaging into the ocean for a minute. And, what, and why we're so adamant about why radiation in the Pacific is the issue that we got to also constantly, consistently make people aware of so that the ocean has its, some kind of opportunity so that we have some... We, do, we try to stop this. And what's going on is, you know, this is St. Paddy's Day. These reactors all have their backs broken during the earthquake, picked up and slammed down. And they're full of radioactive material and water from the detonations and from the melted cores like Harvard told you, like MIT just told you, like AP just told you, like C-SPAN, the NRC, in a congressional hearing told you, and in a few moments, like Stanford's going to tell you, that these buildings... And, of course, the industry told you that, but at the same time, um, we have Martin from the New York Times, the agent correspondent, and just listen to him again. Um, my name is Martin Fackler. I am the Tokyo Bureau Chief. And the, the title, as we just heard, was Challenges and Opportunities After the Fukushima Nuclear Disaster, this crisis management. And, and the question of what do you tell your public? You know, I mean, I, you know, do, do you tell them that there's a serious nuclear accident or do you play it down? Do you try to cover it up? Our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. 
Well, that's reactor four he's saying, huh? but we know reactor four looks like that. You can download the pictures underneath my video right now. Knock your socks off. Give her all you want. They're all down there. And so we're worried that that building, Integrity, is destroyed and that a couple of days ago it collapsed. And that what we're seeing here is an uncompressed uh, three minute video that was compressed 20 times and it showed a fire slowly move across, a massive release. If you go look at the videos before it, uh, you'll see the stability of it and then it uh, everything shows starts showing up this is a bad webcam but at tepco a live webcam archived onto the internet automatically and it shows all well you if you're just joining you probably can't see it so good now but there's a low intensity glow behind all that smoke that gets dissipated you can't see it and it shows a sustained fire to spread out a long way and we're very concerned because that site um, not only unit four right now is the most you know all the reactors in desperate mode any of those could have went and all they had to do is start once once something happened was start uploading their old footage they got 25,000 uh, video one hour sequences where they can upload that stuff and you would think everything is okay but if you actually know the whole story and you can find someone like myself and I can show you all these pictures you have to be worried because that has 14,000 Hiroshima bombs on the roof of it 14,000 Hiroshima bombs on the roof of it uh, now there's another headline of 40 million Beckles of iodine 131 in a single bit of kelp and right and think about that headline for a second Amount of most likely larger is iodine-131. And then think about this headline here. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine-131. And think about those numbers, 40 million, 20 million. Well, the 40 million in the ocean, when this stuff reaches your coastline, then it washes back down to your coastline, right? That's, that's what i got to keep putting out there so people can really wrap their mind around why the apologists are out there saying that they don't find nothing on the coastline because that's where it's all going to wash back down to but it's also filling up the ocean so as this disposition this nuclear and this is based upon a short release from fukushima three years ago and like harvard told you and like stanford told you or is going to tell you in a minute and and like all these other clips i played for you tonight of the major institutions on the fourth excuse me in the fifth day and even a senate hearing you know, because that's, you can't find that collection. It's so hard to get your hands on a collection like this in order like this and so that you can digest it and be able to make up your own mind. And there's a good reason for that. Now, there's another important part to all of this, and that I'm going to close up on here tonight, and that's about the ocean. I'm going to play after this um, little what I'm going to talk about here now. I'm going to play the Stanford clip and then I'm going to close up on the ocean and the iPhone charge lady explained that to everybody so they can understand that part too. And you have to hold these people accountable. And the only way to hold them accountable is to get, to call them out for their lies, right? And so I want to touch on the ocean. Those reactors, as I started earlier, are all hemorrhaging directly into the ocean. Uh, radioactive materials, fission production, because the cores have melted down through it, like all the, the industry has told you, on day four and day five, like I showed you tonight. And the basements are cracked. Uh, there's water coming down the mountains behind this. And what happens, It gets the, the fissionable products gets mixed up or irradiates the water, and the particles around it get swept out, and they're irradiated. And uh, so there's a constant flow of between 400 to 800 tons a day going into the going into the ocean and how that works is because there's 1440 minutes in a day and this stuff is hemorrhaging directly into the ocean and it's non-stop for over 1160 days right and so think of it as st patty's day and where it just keeps going into the ocean 1440 minutes a day is like a thousand pounds of dye getting poured into the ocean every minute 1440 minutes a day a truck backs up 
with a thousand pounds of dying gets out of the way and another truck backs up and another truck every minute for 1160 days right and so that floods the ocean that fills the ocean up so all the marine coastal animals and, and at some point because it doesn't stop coming out it's recirculating into itself right and that's what's going on because it doesn't stop coming out and we don't we got the homeless down there working on it not like chernobyl at chernobyl it was one third the size as any of the reactors at fukushima it was a 30 percent meltdown fukushima's were all 100 percent meltdowns chernobyl the people went in for 15 or 20 seconds and went home they went through 600,000 conscripted soldiers and a million people and they spread the radiation dose out that way at fukushima they're bringing the homeless in there to do the most difficult job on the planet and so it's easy to assume that drunk or uneducated can't read or can't write caused a major event or that the building's integrity is no longer there you could agree with that one the building is destroyed. Is there anybody doubts the inter says that's a safe building? Can you rebuild that building? Right? That's the question you should ask yourself. Of course you can't because the radiation destroys the integrity of the building. Uh, annihilates the integrity of the building. So here's a quick clip coming up of Stanford. And that was the 16th. I'll double check. No, this one was April 11th. This was 30 days later. And this is 26 seconds long, and we're going to play that right here, right now. Stanford University. We are very, very lucky today to have two real experts on this topic. Uh, the first is Matthew Wald from the New York Times. Although it's a mess to try to cope with a meltdown, or three meltdowns, three meltdowns in the spent fuel pool right after a tsunami. So that's 30 days later from Stanford, three meltdowns, he corrected himself, and a melted fuel pool. So you have tonight a really good, a really good show tonight because we had MIT, AP, C-SPAN, Harvard, and Stanford. Can't ask for no better than that. That's as good as it gets. You got all the experts. So nobody can say that this is not an issue. Nobody can say that this is not... Um, as bad as Chernobyl. Don't get me wrong, Chernobyl was terrifying. 3,500 square miles evacuated till the end of time. 3,500 square um, miles evacuated till the end of time, but that keeps spreading out further and further and further, right? And you think about the Chechnya River in Russia in the 1940s, they evacuated 7,500 communities. 7,500 communities and 9,000 square miles permanently uh, because of radioactive fallout from you know the nuclear industry that's why the nuclear industry is the worst thing imaginable it's the most craziest thing imaginable now I'll, back to the ocean for one second here's Ken Busler for the Woods Hole Oceanographic Apologist Institution for the nuclear industry and these little arrows are the location and strength of the current called the Kuroshio we like to call it the Gulf Stream of the Pacific because we're more familiar often with the Gulf Stream. Very fast moving current, moves like a little snake offshore. And when you release a contaminant that's soluble, it's gonna move with those currents as fast as 1,500 kilometers here in one month. This is a prediction from a Jap. So 1,500 kilometers in one month. Uh, how many months has gone away again? Uh, 36. So 1,500 kilometers a month, but it's no issue. 1,500 kilometers a month, but it's not going to get here um, till 10 years down the road. 1,500 kilometers in a month, but it didn't stop coming out of there. So every day right behind it, and this is how I explain it. If it's coming out of there, if, and it is, it is confirmed. Everything I tell you is confirmed. It's coming out of there at 500, say 600 tons, but it doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. It won't give it up. 
And so that's why that model you're looking at is the reality of everything. Now, Unit 4, in the last couple of days, has most likely collapsed. Or Unit uh, 3 might have blown up. Or Unit 2 might have blown up. Or Unit 1 might have blown up. Do you think they might have? Do you think they could have? How about that? Do you think they might? One of them could have possibly blown up because there's missing cores. And they hit water table and a liter of water expands 1,100 cubic feet. So that could set off a big explosion when you're talking about eight, 9,000 degree temperatures from the melt of the cores. But everything's okay, Dana. Hang a curtain on it, Dana. Put some paper wall, wallpaper up, Dana. Get a bucket, put it in a corner, move a big piece of graphite over there so you got some privacy, you can have a dump. Everything's fine, Dana. Just ask Seth Dorn from CBS who a month ago produced At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. Taking place here in Reactor 4. Now, do it, see, he think he's in Reactor 4, probably. Maybe. Well, he absolutely could. And could Tepco pull the wool over his eyes? Well, they weren't allowed to use their cameras till they got there. They weren't allowed, you know, to do a lot of things. They don't know what the hell they're going into. They get all these stories, nightmares thrown at them. Everybody's trying to get ready to get for the big show, holding their breath. We're going into a huge radiation environment. And they probably weren't even there. They were probably shot that down in Florida. You can't trust them. They green screened everything in. You can't trust them. They've done that at CNN from the Gulf War. I've got them clips up on my site. Um, what else we got for you tonight? Let's do banana head again one more time. Hang on. We heard about bananas and we shouldn't make the comparison, but I think actually I disagree a little bit. You know, if we look at the radioactivity and the response, these are beta emitters that have similar energies, and so we actually can make some comparisons. But the point here on this slide... Well, that came out really low. I have to take that clip and wind it back up, get some audio on it. I think it came out low. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, he's talking about bananas. If you eat a banana, you off-gas the exact same amount because of potassium-40. It's stupid and significant. And he's running around the world telling everybody that the radiation is like a banana. Well, if it's like a banana, why are we worried about it? And how can it be like a banana? Because a banana is one of the elements in our universe. You'll find potassium-40 on the moon. You'll find it everywhere else. But uh, it's homeostasis. You can't get any more in your body than you already have. And so the elements from these chain reaction meltdowns don't exist anywhere else in the solar system. They're not on their periodic tables. The sun does not create them. They're not supposed to be released into our environment. But what these reactors do is they boil off all the time. 120,000 uh, 120, liters a day from the fuel pools gets boiled off in your community. But you've got to think about that reactor on the ocean. It's taking a million gallons a minute and it's boiling that. What does that mean? It's using it for energy, Dana. It makes money. It gives you electricity. Yeah, and it, in a glass of water, there's 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, which create oxygen and are the basis of the food chain. In a glass of water, let me say that again, 75 to 100 million, million, 100 million phytoplankton creatures in a glass of salt water. And they're boiling them to death. And, but that's not all in that glass of water. There's a trillion creatures in that glass of water. But 75 to 100 million, there's trillions, but there's 75 to 100 million are phytoplankton. The ocean is a super life. Well, it was a super life. That was a super something from hell um, because of the, the, the constant releases and the disposition, not only from the direct, the direct, direct, the direct release into the ocean, but from the aerosol and the dispersal and then the fallout that'll continue for uh, many generations to come, right? We can never probably ever stop it. And so let's play the iPhone lady one more time in a second here, and I'll set you up for that. Uh, one more time, let me explain. Billing 4 is a huge nightmare because it can just disintegrate 
It's so, uh, because it's sitting in the radiation, it was cooked constantly for three years uh, alongside, both sides of it, there's like 8,000 degree temperatures down in the earth or somewhere. And so that cooked all the ground, all the material. It detonated, it destroyed itself, it mutated itself. Um, all the buildings are 100% destroyed and they're releasing radiation. So it works this way, radiation, you can radiate metal. You know how you take a screwdriver and magnetize a screwdriver? Well, you can do the same kind of trick with radiation. Because your time of particles one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And once again, building four and this video, this enigma that nobody has tried to explain and everybody has tried to say, oh, it's just flashing lights, Dana, or no, there was fog, Dana. And after analyzing the video, there was a fire. There wasn't a, probably a detonation. And there was certainly a major uh, event that happened at Fukushima. And anything that happens at Fukushima is particularly, and if you look at it, you can still see the flames down low in that kind of a horizon you see there, and is reddish glow. It's, you can't see it good because of the, the smoke from it all. And so this is sustained and burns for about 30 minutes. That's highly visible, but it gets uh, distorted because of the webcam is crap and the smoke. Not fog. That's not fog that does this. The fog doesn't create fire or move a fire away. That fire probably moved around 1,800 feet. If one of these buildings, like number four, went bang, and they already did, and unit three was fell 25 miles away, they have a law against you reporting on this, tweeting on this, Facebooking on this. The internet has been shut down in Japan since October 25th, 2013. And we are very, very concerned because this system is full of crazies. At WIP, they equated plutonium, and most of it at WIP, even though they tell you it's just gloves and stuff like that, that they're putting a half mile on the planet. Why they got uranium-235 sitting at Hanford, 450 billion gallons in the soil, 41 miles open pits there, with uranium-238, full of uranium-238. Because they don't know what to do with it. They tell you they're putting it in a sarcophagus, but every sarcophagus has to be vented. So they're always releasing material. The more you create, the more you release. And that if you took all the radioactive material on this planet and you compressed it, you would have three cubic miles or kilometers. And that's enough to spread an uh, inch over five of the smallest states of America. The entire state covered in an inch. And if you try to walk across one of those states, the x-rays and the neutrons from the particles, the big chunks, will cook you like a chicken. You wouldn't get jack fur. And so, listen, the iPhone lady came out, and she equated ingesting radioactive hot particles, which gives you an x-ray every second of your life till the end of time, with this. But I charge my iPhone every single night. I charge my iPad every single night. I touch that cord, I move that cord, I don't feel a tingle, I don't feel a shock. And if I lift that cord, it wouldn't hurt me. And I'm not trying to be funny, I'm trying to equate radiation exposure to something that you can understand. It's, they're down in the levels of licking your iPhone charger. But I charge my iPhone every single I'd like to welcome our own oh, students sorry, from nuclear science and engineering and other members of the... Oops, that's okay. Got, got, got through it pretty good tonight. I had to recover and get another computer and get it up and running and get all the equipment on it, plug everything in, get all the 13,500 headlines, trans uh, them over, get all the video clips, uh, do all the updates, 300 updates, and it's going to bankrupt me at this rate. This is seven computers in six months. It's... Uh, brutal what they're doing to me. It's brutal what they got done to me now. This is small fortune, right? Uh, so we'll catch you folks maybe tomorrow night. Maybe there's a short video coming out. Maybe I should put out all five of those clips I showed you tonight in a uh, each clip by itself and then people can download those and use them in videos to, to articulate to somebody that Harvard said it 
And, and I got a lot more coming up uh, in the next week or so once I finally get to stabilize and I get a break because I haven't stopped. They've taken, they killed seven of my computers now. And thank goodness you can just, when they're new, you can bring them back. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to have to do forensics on these new computers and figure out who's doing this to me, right? So they're leaving the trail by doing this. And I'm just going to keep bringing it back. And they're going to come at me and say, hey, why do you keep bringing me these computers? I say, well, the vultures are hacking a crack out of me. And then we can bring in a system and maybe get after these people. But they can't shut me down. You can't stop me. I'll keep showing up. I know how to get hands on computers. I'll keep getting them. And I can do this because this is what I do for a living anyway. So I can format computers till the end of time. And, it's what, you know, I don't need it. I hopefully don't need to do something like this. But you got me to a point now where I'm worn out. But let's keep going if that's what you want. You ain't going to stop me. I'll go find another connection if that's what it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. Because I have every right to do that. I, I don't need your permission. You know, I'm taking it. And I'm telling you right now, might as well give it up. The nuclear industry is history. You're garbage. You're the worst thing that ever happened to every species on this planet, bar nothing. You are the most disgusting, demented, maniacal entity that we have ever encountered in our, in our universe. There's nothing else in our universe as evil as this. There's nothing in our universe that is immune to this. And we have to deal with this. This is not something we're going to leave for other generations to work out. This is something we are going to work out and that we are going to control forever. That their, their chance is gone. They spend their entire careers, 70 years of lying, saying it's like a banana, saying it's like a potato, saying it's like insignificant, indigenous, everyday stupid background radiation when it's the most terrifying thing imaginable and they're doing it for a paycheck and they probably don't even understand the repercussions of what this means. Well I do. You probably do at this stage hopefully. And we have to stop and we have to do the right thing not only for the human race but for every species on this planet. For that ocean. That ocean can't sustain this. You drop an isotope in a glass of water with 75 to 100 million phytoplankton and it's bye bye. And that isotope, if it's uranium plutonium, can do that for tens of thousands of years, millions and billions of years, if it's uraniums. And so we are not going to leave this for some other generation. And right now, this could, any of these buildings could have detonated. And we'll never know. They're not going to tell us. Just like they never told us that. But like I showed you tonight, Harvard, Stanford, MIT, and everybody else. We'll catch you folks soon. I, I will. I will do that. Okay. I'll upload. We'll, I'll upload all five of those clips as individual clips. And I'll probably get them up tonight, hopefully, or tomorrow morning. I'm gonna take Zoe for a little walk because it's almost dark here now. But we're up and running again. I'm gonna unplug from the internet immediately. And do you guys want me to leave the the chat room running for a while? See, so I'll leave it running for like another ten or fifteen minutes. And everybody can wind down. Because I know they've all been saying that or not. I don't know. But I'm going to... Maybe we should do that. No, well, we'll try that the next time. How about that? We'll do that next time. Because I'm not going to be here to keep an eye on things. Thank you, everybody. I am going to come in and read uh, as much as I can tonight. We'll catch the rest tomorrow. i got a lot of audio to listen to, so that'll be fine, right? And uh, hugs for everybody. You Don't forget, Dan. Dana loves you. I love what you do. I appreciate everybody. There's a whole lot of videos, a lot of other opinions underneath this video. There's all kinds of links under this video. And that'll get you started if you're new to this. Cancer takes 5 or 10, 15 years. I'm importing all my cancer videos, all my cancer headlines. And we'll do that the next show. We'll include that. Zoe's out barking. We'll catch you folks <laughs> the next time. Uh, but anyway, it was a good stream. We got a lot of really important information out there. Hugs for everybody. Take care. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us guys and it's, it's really bad.